Welcome back everyone to Paltos Fountain Hobbies. This is Season 3, Episode 2 of Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. We are playing with the Emirates of Hakan, Federation of Seoul, University of Jolnar, Exja Kingdom, the L1Z1X Mindnet, and the Naolu Collective on the board. Uh, we just wrapped up round number one. Last round we focused on the uh, Emirates of Hakan. This time we're going to fo focus on the Naolu Collective. So let's grab their card here, <clears throat> take a look at the Nalu Collective, and we'll talk about their leaders, and then we'll kind of focus, what we're doing this round of, uh, of Twilight Imperium this season, we're going to kind of kind of focus on one of the factions each turn, then I'll kind of play through all the other character plays in fast forward mode, and then just kind of give you guys a summary of the turn. This way we can keep the, uh, the video not to be super long, you kind of get a flavor of some of the different factions and, and what's out there. So um. And this way I can also play and focus on uh, sort of solo play without sort of uh, having to spend a lot of time dragging you guys through the rule lookups and all that stuff that I'm going to have to do because it's still like my, my only my third time playing this. So, uh, so yeah, to jump into Naolu Collective, I think um, first of all, um, Naolu Collective, uh, Serpentine Psychic Race, known for their foresight in matriarchal society. If you see a picture of them here and there, they, they, they premiere on the... Box art. Now Luke Collective has got that special ability where their initiative is always zero. So they technically always go first in, in the game. Uh, so uh, governed by female leaders chosen for their psychic abilities, they prioritize intuition and communal well-being, using their precognitive power to navigate the complex political landscape of the galaxy. Renowned for their reluctance and preference for diplomacy over direct conflict, the Naolu excel in manipulation and strategic planning. Nalu's narrative significance lies in their ability to intrigue the depth of the galaxy, highlighting the power of foresight and diplomacy in a universe where the future is a crucial background. Okay, so uh, one of the other things we are playing with uh, this turn is we've got some custom-made uh, leaders cards. In one of the features of um, Twilight Imperium 3 is the leaders. And we've, we've gone ahead and printed, I got these off of a, a PDF on BoardGameGeeks.com. Uh, you guys can go check for those. Just I just did uh, Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition and Leader cards, and you can find them. Uh, we'll start with the Naolu Collective here. Actually, last round, I read the Naolu Collective's um, uh, Secret Objective instead of reading the Hakan Secret Objective. So let's, let's go back. We've got the Hakan here, Secret Objective. Uh, is merciless this turn one success i successfully took control of my neighbor's planet that held his space dock on the board my neighbor is another player direct directly to my right or left ouch that's that's tough so we're gonna have to get uh some conflict going because there's a supernova right next to him it might be tougher to do the federation so uh yeah, so we'll have to sort of play that one by ear. Uh, so we've got the secret objective for the Emirates of Hakan. Uh, let's check out the secret objective for the Naolu Collected Master of Ships. I control Mechatol Rex. I have space dock here and at least eight non-fighter ships in the Mechatol Rex system. So let's see how well they can pull that off. Um, one thing, too, uh, we're playing with those cards, those uh, leader cards. The leaders for the Naolu Collective are uh, Maban the Admiral. So Maban the Admirals, obviously, like Naolu Collective's unique strategies, they, they use this uh, foresight and maneuverability. And Maaban of the Naolu fleet, as an admiral, probably has an emphasis on avoiding direct confrontations. Kind of think of them like a guild navigator. They're going to try to figure out ways to... That's why I think this wormhole might play, come into play with this, right? So uh, they've also got Telsa, the agent. So we've got an agent in, uh, in Twilight Imperium, which is um, espionage, sabotage, subtle manipulation, these kinds of things. Um, Telsa, the agent of the Naolu Collective, uh, is gathering intelligence from the other, um, other factions with their abilities of foresight. Let me show you the, uh, the cards here for the, the agents, the leader cards here that we've put up. Last agent is uh, Zeyu, the diplomat. So we've got an admiral, we've got an agent, we've got a diplomat. Zeyu plays a critical role in navigating the political waters of the Twilight Imperium universe. So 
more of these diplomacy, diplomatic actions, things like this. So I think because of their focus on foresight, this is definitely a huge uh, win for the Nalu Collective. So what we're going to have uh, for our, our turn picks this time, let's have um, Jolna Collective will... I mean, sorry, the, the, uh, the Nalu Collective, they're going to start out with... Uh, the Imperial card. So they're going to start out with Imperial. Uh, and then from there, uh, the Hakan Emirates. Let's have them, well, that, since they have this warfare, let's have them do a, a warfare move. Uh, last round, we had the L1Z1X Minenet do a, a warfare move. So we'll give that to the Hakan Emirates. Uh, for the Federation, let's have them do technology this round. Let's have them focus on their technology. Uh, for the Universities of Jolnar, uh, Universities of Jolnar, uh, they will focus on, let's have them focus on they did technology last time. Let's have Jolnar. Well, let's have them go with. Let's have them go with logistics, and they'll also get the bonus for this. Um, uh, the Zekcha Kingdom. Let's have them go with diplomacy. They'll also take a bonus here. And uh, let's have the L one. Uh, L one Z one X. My net, let's have them go with, um, let's have them go with political. Okay, so they've already gone ahead and, and done some conquesting here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see how that works out for everyone. We do have a trade law in place here. So again, because the Nalu Collective goes first, let's just go ahead and give the Nalu Collective, uh, they're, they're going to draw the top public objective card. And it's going to say, I now spend 10 influence. Now we're going to add up the influence from each of the, uh, each of the things and see what kind of influence everyone has. And then we immediately um, uh, can make this card inactive. And then we will go ahead and award the now loop collective with two uh, victory points as well. So, okay, so that's gonna start us out. Let's get this back over here and we'll continue the, the round robin gameplay for everyone. For the fast forward round, two victory points go to the Nalu Collective because of the Imperial card. Uh, we move into a diplomatic relation between Zanshaw Kingdom and the L1Z1X uh, Mindnet. Federation of Seoul plays a, a technology. They get some technological advancement. Uh, Emirates of Hakan do a military action expanding forward and Jolnar logistics game for command counters from their reinforcements. Uh, Pontos Fathom Hobbies is brought to you by the books that we produce. We've got a bookstore link down below. You can check out August Mulderhauer's Genealogy of Cthulhu, uh, The Fallen Space Cephalopod down below to Sunken Rilia. Yeah. We've also got Giuseppe Balsamo's Hermeticism of Hastor, the sci-fi uh, gimmick of this one is Hastor is a forgotten dreamland of an alien world that no longer exists, but their dreams live on. Uh, Esoteric Dragon Mysteries from our podcast series. We've also got William Mitchell's Dead Sons 11 and Locksman of Quanta Sci-Fi Saga, books one and two of the Locksman Saga. Alchemy and Anthroposophy in the Dune Saga. If you guys like Frank Herbert, you're going to love this one. It's the Jungian influence, anthroposophical origins inside of the Dune Saga. It's a deep dive into the science and the tech of this influence by Samuel Butler. We've also got Artificial Psychoanalysis of Desiring Machines. Um, are we the machines or are the machines us? Those questions and more explored in there. And then finally, the Compendium, Catu Journals out of Lovecraft's Providence Deluxe Edition, collecting all six volumes. So go check out the bookstore below. You can also check out our Patreon for as little as a dollar. You can read some of these materials. Check out our podcast on the other channel. And on the Patreon, stay on top of our 
uh, Song of Ice and Fire gameplay. We've got miniature painting. We're doing um, Game of Thrones and Tainted Grail uh, this season. We've got the thing on Outpost 31 gameplay, Cthulhu Death May Die, Cthulhu Wars, and many other games for you. Dune Imperium, Dune Gale Force 9. Go check out our playlist below. Thank you for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment below. Helps to grow the channel and appreciate all of your support. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so let's check out the uh, the results of the turn. Again, Nalu Collective, they were able to uh, move up to two points with their Imperial. We'll mark them as complete up here. Uh, next up, we've had the uh, Diplomacy phase from uh, the Exja Kingdom, they've made a pact with the Lins, uh, L1Z1X MineNet uh, that they will not be able to uh, enter each other's systems. So there's a diplomacy pact in place for those guys. Uh, we'll leave that there, also marked as inactive. Uh, next up, we got three cards from uh, the L1Z1 MineNet picked up uh, Rise of a Messiah, Thugs, and Opening the black box, we'll add those action uh, cards to their deck and close out uh, their card. Oh, this is up here for uh, now the collective. Okay, uh, next up we had uh, a logistics from. The Universities of Joel Nar, they were able to pick up four uh, command tokens they can use at a later date. Move them to inactive as well. And then um, Warfare Phase. As we know, the objective card from the Hakan Emirates, uh, they moved into the Quinson and Raron systems. So now they've got those two systems as well added to their ranks. Um, that's going to put them, and we'll do the victory points next, but that's going to get them closer to their victory space. Uh, and then finally, we've got the technology for the Federations of Soul. Uh, they were able to pick the H Hylar 5 Assault Laser. Uh, they have five technological advancements. I have one command planet. I command five planets outside of my system. They don't have that, but that's okay. We will put that to inactive. And so, uh, let's go through some of the success points. Uh, uh, I think first off, Emirates of Hakan has got, I have, um, I command five s systems outside of my home world system. They have one, two, three, four. They still don't have that. So that's for them. Um, Anti-mass deflectors, they do not have five yet so that's fine uh four the jolnar has uh the tikran and uh and the torkran systems so let's see they command four outside of their home system not five but they need those cards which i'll get them in a second um we do have the L1ZX MineNet, they've got the um, this system here with the wormhole. Uh, that's going to bring them to just three, four, five, four outside of their system, but not five. And the Naulu Collective have gained another system that brings them to three outside their home system. Okay, so no awarded points for this round, but no worry, we're starting to uh, migrate in space. Uh, we will see you guys in round number three. Thank you for watching. Uh, looking forward to the next round. Bye-bye.